Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to Skill Cap's easiest to play 3v3 composition tier list. With Shadowlands just around the corner, you may be considering what composition you're going to be looking to play to push your rating in 3v3 the first week, or even trying to figure out what compositions you and your friends can team up with to play and have success with in the new expansion. You may also be a returning player just looking to see how the meta has evolved. Our goal with this tier list is to do two things. First is that we're going to make sure every spec has a good composition included, so you know which one to play. Second, we're going to be ranking the compositions into three tiers, easy, moderate, and hard. So by the end of the list, you should know what compositions are strong to play for your class or spec and what partners you should aim to play with as well as how difficult you can expect it to be. Before we get started, we here at Skillcaps release premium content every single week. That includes news, tier lists, arena walkthroughs, and a whole lot more to not only keep you up to date on the meta as it evolves, but also to give you that edge when it comes to all aspects of World of Warcraft PvP. So if you want to help support the channel and be notified the second we release any new content, a subscription to the channel as well as a like on this video costs nothing and would help us out a lot. Alright, enough of the boring intros. Let's jump into the video. On our easy tier, the compositions going in are generally comps that require little to no coordination and have either a large amount of sustained damage, high burst damage, or just generally very durable, meaning you can just jump straight in and have relative success. To start, let's take a look at some melee cleaves. Arms Warrior and Death Knight have historically paired up extremely well together. They're referred to commonly as TSG, and Shadowlands is no exception to both classes being very strong right now. The high pressure and the durability of both classes combined with a more Mortal Strike effect from Warrior makes this a very potent cleave. As for healers, either a Druid or Monk currently work the best, but you can still have success with any healer other than a Priest. Swap the Warrior out for a Windwalker and we have our second comp, Windwalker Death Knight. Similar to the Warrior, this composition is very cleavy, meaning you can pick a target and tunnel them down. Granted, there is a little more involved with the ability to combine grip with leg sweep. Nonetheless, this is very easy to pick up and play and incredibly strong. For this version, Mist Weaver is the preferred healer for the extra leg sweep and instant crowd control. But any healer other than a priest can do very well. You can even remove Death Knight altogether and pair up Windwalker Monks with a Fury Warrior. While a little more unorthodox, this composition has done very well for Fury Warriors when their strong high bursts of both classes are paired up with a healing reduction from a Wind Walker. Though this is Fury's strongest composition, it's not even remotely comparable to any arms comps right now, but the options are there. This works well with any healer other than a priest, but we recommend either a Druid or Restoration Shaman for their strong healing. Demon Hunters are also great in melee cleaves, paired up with either a Wind Walker, Arms Warrior, or a Death Knight. All three variations have different strengths and weaknesses, but share mostly the same game plan. Focus on the same target, maximize damage, and rotate defensives in order to survive. The Death Knight variant is especially strong right now, thanks to the added PvP talent Mortal Rush giving the composition a form of healing reduction. As for healers, all of these Demon Hunter cleaves pair up well with either a Restoration Shaman or Restoration Druid. But again, Monk and Paladin are decent but weaker alternatives. Next up is a few different Retribution Paladin compositions. Ret Hunter Disc, often referred to as PHP, is looking to be very promising and relatively easy to play. You just need to combine a Freezing Trap onto a healer while you look to pop your offensive cooldowns onto a DPS. The insane burst damage of this composition makes it much easier to perform at lower ratings, and thus easier to pick up than most setup based compositions. This is best played currently with a Marksman, Hunter, and a Disciplined Priest, but you could play this composition with any of the Hunter specializations right now to varying levels of success. Restoration Shaman can also replace a Disciplined Priest to give you a more defensive lineup. If you want more cleave and less setup based composition, look no further than Retribution Paladin Arms Warrior. This composition does very well into other cleaves due to the defensive utility provided by both a warrior and also a red while still having that strong single target pressure. For healers, we recommend either a druid or shaman. Druids are more offensive with cyclone and an extra stun, and shamans bring more to the table in terms of defensive survivability. Our last melee cleave going into our easy tier is going to be turbo cleave, which is enhancement shaman and arms warrior paired up with either a druid, monk, or paladin healer. Sadly, Turbo has seen better days, but the added utility the Arms Warrior brings helps to mask over some of Enhancement's inherent weaknesses. While this is not the strongest comp, this is Enhancement's best bet at pushing raiding in Arena. To round off our easy tier, we're getting into some spell cleaves, our first being Shadow Priest Warlock, commonly known as Shadow Play. Shadow Play looks to rot enemies by maximizing damage on all targets, thus creating heavy multi-dot pressure. This composition can be played with both the Warlock being either Destruction or Demonology. 
but Affliction is the strongest variant heading into Shadowlands, with Destruction being second. The pure damage aspect and double threat of this composition makes it very easy to just pick up and play. Regarding healers, Druid, Shaman, Monk, or Paladin can work, so everything except Priest. If we had to pick one though, we'd recommend Restoration Druid right now simply because of how strong they are. This type of rot playstyle which, simply put, is a phrase for just maximizing damage can also be applied to two other compositions for the Shadow Priest, both Elemental and Balanced Druid, with the latter often referred to as Owl Play. Again, both look to maximize damage while in turn being incredibly durable, with all members having the ability to off-heal on top of strong defensives. Shadow Priest Elemental prefers to play with either a Druid or Paladin Healer, while Owl Play prefers a Restoration Shaman or Paladin Healer. Okay guys, that's gonna wrap up our easy tier. Before we jump to the next difficulty, let's quickly recap the compositions that made it into our easy tier. If you're enjoying the video so far, a sub to the channel would be phenomenal. Coming up next, we've got our moderate tier. The difference in these compositions is that they all require some form of setup as well as tactics to perform well. If you're going into games without a game plan or synergizing with your team, then you will find it slightly more difficult to climb rating. First up, we've got some hunter compositions. We have Jungle Cleave, which consists of a hunter playing either marksman or survival, preferably paired up with a pharaoh druid and a disciplined priest. In this comp, we wouldn't recommend playing any other healer. The synergy with a disc giving that extra damage, dark archangel, and potential psychic scream to follow up traps is just too strong. The difficulty with jungle compared to retribution hunter, which made it into our easy tier, comes with trying to maintain momentum, as this composition brings a lot less burst damage. Also, you're required to play a lot better defensively in order to survive. Another strong composition we've not seen for some time and making its return in Shadowlands is gonna be Thug Cleave, which consists of Subtlety Rogue, Hunter, and Disc Priest. Again, all three Hunter specs work with Marksman being the strongest and Beast Mastery being the weakest. The main reason for this composition making a return is because of the strength of both Sub Rogue and Marksman Ship Hunter having some of the highest bursts in Shadowlands. You can also achieve very potent crowd control chains with Kidney Shot and Freezing Trap, then simultaneously lock down your kill target with Cheap Shots during Shadow Dance. Similar to Jungle Cleave, this composition thrives with a Disciplined Priest and requires a moderate amount of setup to perform well. The final Hunter composition making it onto our list is when paired up with a high damage caster. Both Shadow Priest and Warlock are great options. These comps again both focus on securing crowd control onto the healer. The Shadow Priest version offers a little more crowd control and single target pressure, doing extended crowd control chains with Psychic Horror, Silence, Psychic Scream, or even Mind Bomb combined with Freezing Trap onto a healer while you unload damage onto a DPS. The Affliction Warlock variation is a little more spread damage focused due to Warlock's higher cleave pressure. Look to maximize damage, secure crowd control, onto the healer and eventually overwhelm your opponents. Both variations can perform well with any healer other than Priest, the two strongest being Druid bringing some added crowd control and Shaman being stronger defensively. Shadow Priest is incredibly strong right now and as a result have many composition options available. We already covered Shadow Play and Owl Play in our easy tier, as well as Scatter Play which is Hunter Shadow. Honestly, Shadow works well with pretty much every melee. The difficulty comes with combining your own damage with your teammates and extending crowd control chains. There's Arm Shadow which plays heavily around combining Stun Silence with Sharpened Blade, and is one of the most durable compositions thanks to all of the extra utility coming from Overwatch, Spell Reflect, War Banner, Massive Spell, and Void Shift to name a few. This composition looks to maximize damage while either crowd controlling or doing swaps onto healers to maintain pressure. This is best played with either a Druid or Restoration Shaman. Swap the Arms Warrior for an Unholy Death Knight and you have a more damage focused composition, sacrificing some defensive utility. The main strength of this composition is combining Death Grip with Psychic Scream for some decent setups. Then there's Shadow Red, which again has a ton of utility and defensives, but a lot more burst. Look to crowd control healers with Shadow's instant crowd control as the Retribution pops wings, then survive and play defensive during downtime. Again, go for a Druid or Restoration Shaman healer. Shadow Pharaoh has a ton of crowd control and off healing, and even relatively strong spread pressure. This composition again just focuses around putting instant crowd control onto the enemy healer while you look to maintain the pressure on the DPS. This variation prefers a Paladin healer to bring the added crowd control via Repentance. And of course, you can't forget Shadow Priest Rogue. This has been a popular composition for some time now, even going back as far as the Burning Crusade, and Shadowlands is set to see its return with both Sub Rogues and Shadow Priests currently being S tier. Although the Sub Rogue version requires a little more setup, you can also play the Assassination variant, in which you sacrifice some control and burst for sustained damage. As with most Shadow compositions, look for either a Restoration Druid or Restoration Shaman Healer. Warlocks are also in the same boat. While not as strong as Shadow right now, they still have a ton of composition options, especially when playing a 
Affliction. Affliction Warlocks look for a class that can bring some added support to help them survive while also doing very high damage themselves. With all these compositions, all three Warlock specs can work to varying levels of success, with Affliction being the strongest and Demonology being the weakest. Warlock Warrior combines the spread pressure from a Warlock with the powerful single target damage of a Warrior in order to create pressure. Warrior helps the Warlock to survive with tools like Rally and Cry, War Banner, and Intervene. This is best paired up with either a Restoration Druid or Restoration Shaman. Swap out the Warrior for Windwalker and you have a relatively similar composition in strength, but instead you've got Tiger's Lust and Ring of Peace to help the Warlock survive. If you want a little more control, Warlocks can also play with the Rogue. This composition again plays the same as both the Windwalker and Arms versions. You dot up targets and let your Rogue either crowd control the enemy healer or make swaps. Instead of the utility from Windwalker or Warrior, you receive the consistent peels you need in the form of stuns. As with the previous two comps, either Druid or Shaman healer is preferred. The only other melee we've not mentioned that you'd want to team up with as a Warlock is gonna be a Retribution Paladin. This is a much weaker alternative but has had relative success combining the high burst of a Ret with the high consistent damage of Affliction, adding the utility of Sack, Bop, and Freedom to help defensively. However, we recommend playing this version only with a Restoration Shaman. We mentioned Shadow Play as a potential Warlock composition inside of our EZ tier. There are two others you might want to consider playing that are slightly more challenging. These are with a Frost Mage or an Elemental Shaman. The latter focuses around high damage output and doing setups with Lightning Lasso, while Mage Lock can be played with all three specs. The strongest of which is Frost, which is a little more crowd control oriented, combining your high crowd control on a healer with the ability to kite utilizing the front mage's snares. As for healers, the elemental warlock ideally wants a druid, but monk and paladin can suffice. For the mage version, a druid is gonna be the strongest, but holy paladin or mistweaver are again good options, as you're mainly looking for that stun. It's worth noting that if you're set on playing holy priest, mage lock is actually gonna be your strongest options. Speaking of elemental, they can also pair up with either an arms warrior or windwalker monk. Both very come with the same sort of playstyle. You focus high pressure on one target, then combine Lightning Lasso on your kill target with either an Incap or Stormbolt onto the healer. This composition has high survivability and high consistent pressure. For healers, aim to find a Druid for both, but Disc, Monk, and Paladin can all work. A more unique composition worth mentioning is gonna be Retribution Paladin Sub Rogue. This composition has had previous success combining the insane control of Sub Rogue with Shadowy Duel, Sap, Blind, and Kidney Shot, while the Red then looks to unload all of its damage. If you're aiming to play this comp, be prepared for very explosive games, and you'll ideally want a disciplined priest healer for the added burst and mass dispel, although Shaman or Paladin can be decent for the added crowd control from Repentance or Hex. Rounding off our moderate tier, we have two balanced druid compositions. Balance can do well in a few caster comps, which we've already mentioned. When paired up with a melee though, it gets a little more challenging. You need to utilize mass entanglement solar beam to secure crowd control, while you and your partner unload damage onto your chosen target. Then follow up your root beam with cyclones. The best melee to pair up with balanced Druid is either a Sub Rogue or Wind Walker. Both bring high burst damage on a relatively short cooldown, making these compositions strong at doing consistent setups. For healers, Shamans and Paladins offer the most thanks to Repentance or Hex. Shaman is stronger against casters thanks to the additional interrupt and grounding, while Paladin brings some added crowd control. Alright, that's gonna complete our moderate tier. You'll see a quick recap on the screen before we move on. Finally, we have our hard tier. The compositions inside are all built around setups as well as doing damage at the right times. You'll need to know tactics, matchups, and also communicate well with your team in order to make them work. First is gonna be the Shadow Priest Mage, commonly known as either Shatter Play or God Comp depending on the healer. This composition revolves around doing extended crowd control chains in order to create pressure. Going into matches without any form of tactics as this composition is gonna be really bad as your overall damage is relatively low. You're gonna need to make sure crowd control chains involving Polymorph, Fear, and Silence are well coordinated with a Psychic Horror or Stun from your healer on your kill target to lock them down. The higher you get as this composition, the harder it becomes. Players will avoid crowd control better, avoid damage, and you will often get out pressured if you don't play perfectly. As mentioned, we're gonna be looking for a healer that brings a stun in this comp. Ideally also some added damage, so either Druid or Paladin are the preferred choice. Going off current strength in Shadowlands, we recommend Restoration Druid. Regarding mage specs, anything can work, but Frost is recommended. Our final composition finding itself in our hard tier is gonna be Rogue Mage. And yes, we know what you're thinking already. Rogue Mage is easy. Just stun somebody and kill them in the opener with your ridiculous burst while you spam Polymorph in the enemy healer. The thing is that mage compositions in general are among the hardest to pick up, because the difficulty of the comp scales with rating. Basically, in order to do well at higher ratings, you need to consistently land crowd control in order to create pressure. 
The idea of landing crowd control and doing damage as a mage isn't easy if enemies are actively playing to stop you. With enemies correctly avoiding crowd control and preventing or peeling setups, you need to be consistently crowd controlling and combining with your rogue and healer in order to secure it. This means that the mage, rogue, and healer all need to be on the same page to secure clean and well executed setups. With Rogue Mage, you can honestly get away with playing any spec on either the Rogue or the Mage to varying levels of strength. Currently, we recommend going with the Sub Frost version. For healers, Priest, Druid, or Paladin can all work well, with Druid or Priest being the strongest. Alright, that's gonna be our easiest to play 3v3 composition tier list. We'll leave a quick recap on the screen of all the 3v3 compositions mentioned in this video. And guys, we here at Skillcapped put a ton of work into guys just like this one to make sure we provide you with the most up-to-date and accurate information you can't find anywhere leading up to and after the Shadowlands release. So if you'd like to support the channel, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell to be notified the moment we release more premium guides. That's it for this video though. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.